Hello everyone and welcome to this video in which I'm going to be going through Anima's code quality and advanced features. Let's do it. In this video, we are going to be talking about the quality of code that Anima generates from our static sketch, Adobe XD and Figma designs. By this, I mean we will be looking at the components themselves, naming conventions, and comparing the generated output to the original static designs. For this, I'm going to be using the desktop view of the classes page that has been converted into React code. So let's go ahead and get the code up. I do this by clicking on the code icon right up here on the top. Now, on a page like this, I would imagine the code behind it involves passing through props to render each and every one of these cards separately. I would imagine it would need something like a title to pass through Yoga with Cherry and a prop for the class duration. Same as for this video pop-up, I would expect this to be a video card component with data used to render the correct title, class duration time, and video itself. In regards to the CSS, I would imagine class names such as video, title, video card being used to pick out elements from the JSX so we can style them in a way that is readable and developer friendly. Let's open up our Anima code to see how it did. Okay, so let's have a look. If I inspect the element and the generated code, you will indeed see a video card component has been generated for us. And if we look at the destructured props, you will see that indeed a title, a class duration as a subtitle, and a few other props are being used to render the card as it is. If we look over to our CSS now, you will see the class names are also as expected. We have a title class to style the element with the class name of title, a video class to style the element with the class name of video, and a video card class name too. The naming conventions in Anima for React components and class names have been programmed to follow rules that most developers are used to, to make code developer friendly and readable when it can. If there is an occasion where we as developers are not convinced on a name, we can easily change that with overrides to our code. There is a separate video on how to do this, so please do check it out. We also have something called Mark Component, which will allow us to select an element and declare it as a component for when we interact with its parent. So for example, let's select this element right here. It's now showing up in orange. Now let's navigate to its parent, check out the code, and here you will see the component we have picked out. This is opposed to us unmarking the component and now inspecting the parent. The code is now not visible as a component. And lastly, we also have an option on Anima to compare the original static design that we imported to the platform to the generated code that we see currently. Anima gives you an option to flip back and forth to compare the two, thanks to this button right here. By clicking the button, you can automatically see one design layered as a transparent layer over the other in order to really find any discrepancies, no matter how seemingly small. With this approach, you can make sure any design is perfectly identical down to the pixel. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video all about the advanced features of Anima. Next up, I'm gonna be going into code overrides and assets. Let's do it.